Guys, it is August. This is the best month of the year right here in my home city of Edinburgh. The Fringe Festival, the International Festival, the Tattoo, everything is coming together at one time in Edinburgh and it's bound to be a record breaking year for the number of people who are visiting Scotland and it is absolutely amazing. I think it is one of the best things that's happened to this country for a very long time. The amount of people, the sheer growth in numbers of people who are coming to visit Scotland I absolutely love all of you who are thinking about it. Please come and visit Scotland, right? But it appears, as always, not everybody is as on board with this right here in Scotland. And I do kind of understand their point of view, right? But I think the problem is people end up taking out their frustrations on their own people. So a lot of people here in Scotland get frustrated with tourists for a lot of the problems that have been caused by the explosion in the number of people who are visiting when actually the problem is with local councils and with the government here in Scotland about infrastructure that we have, which is actually inadequate. I'm gonna be talking to you all about that in today's episode of the vlog. Scotland is at bursting point. We are full, we are absolutely bursting at the seams in terms of numbers of people who are coming to visit Scotland. I think it's amazing, but we've got problems. And I was invited onto a radio show, onto the BBC to talk about this and I am on the defense of tourism and people come to Scotland, right? So in today's episode, I want to show you that interview that I did with the BBC on radio, BBC Radio Scotland, and let you know some of the problems pro and against and what we are facing here. So thanks very much for joining us. It's great to have you here. And if you're new, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button down below. I'm almost at the big 100K. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. It's great to talk to you about all things Scotland and whatever else, as always. Right, okay, Scotland and tourism. Tourism is such an important part of our economy here. Um, it's not really been that way always, but now it is so important because we've realized that actually, through tourism, we can change our economy. We can really support a massive, thriving industry in Scotland if only everybody here in Scotland was on board. So, first of all, let's get talking to the BBC Radio. That's coming right up right now. Now, is Scotland full? It's a prime holiday season and more and more areas of the country seem to have less accommodation, fewer parking spaces and crowded ferries. Perhaps it's a planning problem or perhaps it's infrastructure. Well, travel vlogger Sean Alexander is with us now. Sean, would you agree? Is, is Scotland full? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I think absolutely we, we are at breaking point in some places in the country. Um, I do a lot of travel around to places like the North Coast 500, for example, and on the West Coast. And you can really see the impact that um, the travel is having on some places. Um, that's not to say that we absolutely need these people because we do need tourism and we need it to continue growing. But I think there needs to be a discussion about sustainability. Uh -huh. And so what's, what's required then if, you know, some of these places are feeling the pinch? What, what are the, the, the main things that are required? Car parks, toilets? Uh... Well, I think that's definitely touching on it. Um, toilets is a big one because in a lot of these places, especially in more remote rural places, people are having to use toilets out in the wild and causing a lot of mess, which is pretty much unacceptable, especially in some of the, the most amazing wild landscapes that we have. But otherwise, the, the tourists don't really have a choice because there is nowhere for them to go and you can't really blame them. Um, so I think it is going to be up to us and our, our governments um, and, and those responsible for tourism to kind of step up and really increase the infrastructure in that sense. But the argument has been Scotland's a big place, there's lots of uh, places to go, and if there are pinch points at certain places, then what we should do is maybe urge tourists to go elsewhere. But maybe that's not practical. Well, I think that's actually already happening um, behind the scenes in some of our kind of tourism agencies. There's certain places that they've removed from tourist maps because they are absolutely at bursting point. So, you know, that has already happened, but I don't think that's really the long-term solution because if you look at other countries like Iceland, which really kind of um, suffered after the financial crisis and then recovered massively purely because of tourism, there's a massive opportunity for us as a country with a similar small economy to really um, benefit from tourism. But it needs to be done and have a well-managed properly 
um, supported way. You mentioned, for instance, the North Coast 500. We were reflecting on that the other day, that when that was actually, you know, it's made up. Everything's made up in a, in a sense, but that particular route was made up. Yeah. Partly, actually, to attract people to areas that weren't, yeah. that weren't getting many people, you know, Caithness and Sutherland maybe, and uh, other places in the north, Darnes, other places in the north. But in fact, by just by anecdote, it seems to be causing problems for people locally. And there's so many, so much traffic, so many fast cars going on the wrong side of the road and clogging up single track roads. It's problematic, and there's no way of um, of limiting. The yeah, I think that's it. And when the North Coast was set up as um, one of the best driving routes in the world, I don't think it was really anticipated the, the kind of explosion in tourist numbers we've had. And actually, this is a very, very recent phenomenon. I think it's been really, really the last two years we've had an, a massive explosion in numbers of people coming here for various different factors. For example, Outlander, the show, has brought so many people from North America to Scotland. A lot of the, the sites related to Outlander are up 67%. Uh, and that is a very recent phenomenon. So when they set up a lot of these um, places to go, like the North Coast 500, they didn't really expect what would happen. And I think now people are playing catch up. So um, they wanted more people to go there, but they didn't expect how many would actually go. And now they're they're having to uh, deal with some pretty bad consequences. Yeah, and I suppose we're also getting the effects of um, a, a low pound. So it's it's quite good value to come to Scotland. Absolutely, it's one of the top destinations in the world right now. And place and um, sites like Rough Guide, for example, recently voted Scotland as the most beautiful country in the world. And that was a, a user survey. So you know we've got a lot of attention on Scotland right now, which is great. I totally support that, and I, I hope everybody comes here and has a great time. You know, I, I advocate for that on my videos on YouTube. But you know, we need to make sure everybody's having a great experience. Um, and I don't think we should be demonising tourists like a lot of no. um, sites end up doing. It's, it's, more, it's more about getting the infrastructure and stuff in place. Well, look, thank you very much for joining us. Sean Alexander, a travel vlogger. So that was my interview with the BBC Radio Scotland all about tourism. As you can see, I'm very much pro-tourism. And like you've probably been watching my vlog series, my new vlog series with Rabies, the tour guide company here in Scotland at the Orkney Isles. Let me tell you, I was absolutely shocked in Orkney about the number of people I saw up there. The tourism in different regions in Scotland is absolutely exploding at the seams. Orkney, I went there probably 12, 13 years ago now. Actually, it was more than that. To be honest with you, I went there in summer, the place was pretty quiet, okay? Uh, this year, and I went up there with Rabies, and you'll see the brand new episode of that series coming out on Sunday this week. I'll put the link up above to the series and I want you guys to go and check that out, right? Brand new episode coming from the Orkneys on Sunday and it's going to be a cracker, right? Orkney is a great place and it seems that there's no corner of Scotland that hasn't been touched by this tourism boom, right? Orkney is quite a remote place and what they're experiencing locally there is a really huge growth in the number of cruise ships appearing on Orkney. I think they were expecting 22 cruise ships to appear in Orkney in the month of August, which is just absolutely insane, okay? And while some people would like to focus on the negative of that, for me, it's only positives, right? The amount of businesses, local businesses that are thriving because of those tourists, it is unbelievable. It's such a boon for this country. And also you would have seen a few months ago, I did a trip around the NC 500, the North Coast 500, which is a route around the top of Scotland, 500 miles from Inverness. and. You know what, I am just delighted to see. Places like Inverness is absolutely thriving now. Like I said in that video, Outlander has helped a lot with tourism in Scotland, but there's so many different factors involved. From Inverness and all the small communities around the NC500 are exploding with tourism. I saw it again on this Rabbi's tour. It is amazing to see. Inverness, right? There wasn't a single space left to sleep in that city when I was there the other night. So it just seems to me like, how can we learn from countries like Iceland, which literally turned their fortunes around after the economic crisis? They have survived now on tourism. So how can we do that in Scotland? How can we make this sustainable? Because it will go away if we're not careful, okay? We need to make tourism last in Scotland. We need to make it sustainable. And we need to really show people the best of our country and show them a good time. And that is really what I'm all about on my channel. I want to be positive. I want people to come here and love it as much as I do. And I think the Edinburgh Festival, which is starting literally over the next couple of hours from this video going live, is going to be a big chance to really show people how Scotland is, what we're like here. And actually, it's been a common saying for years that the locals here in Edinburgh hate the festival, right? They hate the festival. 
because our city gets muddled up over the month of August. But I love the festival, I think it's the best time of year. So many people coming in from all different places around the world to enjoy our culture and our city here in Edinburgh. It's amazing. Anyway guys, listen, I need to know your thoughts about this. Down in the comments below, are you somebody who's thinking about coming to Scotland? Are you somebody who's recently been to Scotland? And what did you think about the infrastructure in terms of tourism? Yes, we've got problems, I do acknowledge that, but I think it's generally up to the powers that be. You know, the tourism agencies that are kind of semi-controlled by government, it's down to the government itself and also local councils as well to put money into infrastructure to make sure people are enjoying themselves and having a great time and not spoiling the landscape because they don't have infrastructure like toilets, for example. This is basic stuff. We are woefully lacking in toilet facilities in the Highlands, right? We need to sort this out. That's just one basic thing I can think of. But like, there's a lot involved. I wanna know your thoughts down in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. The Fringe is around the corner and I'm gonna be doing a lot of festival fringe content for you right here on this channel. And I think my first video for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year is going to be a live stream. I'm gonna be doing that either tomorrow night or on Saturday this week. So make sure you just pay attention to my channel because I'll be putting notifications of when that is gonna happen exactly, okay? Thank you so much for watching guys. It's great to speak to you as always. Until the next episode, have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.